Well, today I'm going to be reading to you two portions of Scripture. The first is from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. You find these words in the 42nd chapter of Isaiah, verses 5 and then verses 8 through 10. Thus says the Lord, thus says God, the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. For see, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Let them spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the end of the earth. Let the sea roar and all that is in it, the coastlands and their inhabitants. And here ends the reading of Isaiah. The gospel reading for today is found in the gospel of Mark. I'll invite you to please stand for the reading of the gospel. These words are found in the first chapter of Mark, verses 21 through 27. They, meaning Jesus and the apostles, went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with me, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Let's join together now in hymn number 50. <clears throat> Before I begin the sermon this morning, I want to uh, call your attention to our friend Kurt Shaw. He's in the prayer concerns for today. Uh, his, uh, his illness is uh, progressing. I was talking to his sister-in-law a couple of days ago, and she says that he appears to be about the same, really, but he's just sleeping more. So as the end of his life draws near, we, we keep him in our prayers. We ask God's blessing of mercy and comfort be with Kurt Shaw. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now those words found in Psalm 118 are literally true. This day, this quickly passing moment in time is a day literally created by God. Tomorrow, when you awaken to that new year, you will awaken to a new day, a day that the Lord will have made, the day the Lord will have created. Now today, this Sunday is unusual that this last day of the year falls on a Sunday, falls on a Sabbath day. And for whatever his purposes may be, our Lord God has gathered us together on this final day of 2023 in this place of sacred ground. He's gathered us here to allow us to share together in honoring his Sabbath. The time we spend together here this morning will be quite brief. Our, our worship service will end and we'll walk out of the church doors to encounter the rest of this day, the rest of this passing moment in time called Sunday. This moment in time created by God. Again, for whatever his purposes may be, God has gathered us together today in Hope Lutheran Church. But more importantly, your creator God has given you the gift of life, the gift of existence. And he has invited you to share with him in this moment of time. This is truly, truly the day that God has made. 
and he has truly enabled you to share in this day with him. Now, when we walk out of the doors of the church today, we will walk into a day, a time, that is not the same as when we walked into this church. Events will have taken place that we know nothing about. Babies will have been born. People will have died. The earth will have moved in its orbit around the sun. In other words, when you walk out of the church today, you will walk into something new. And that something new is the new day, the new moment in time that even now your creator God is creating. And of eternal importance is the truth that he wants to share this new day with you. So what does God have planned for you this new day? I have no idea, no idea at all what he has planned for any of us. But as he creates moments in time, new moments in time, he does have plans, plans for you. And we should remind ourselves of the fact that God truly is the creator of all that exists. God loves to create, and your future is and will be his creation. And even at this moment, God is creating your future. Listen to these words now from the book of Genesis. These are the first words, the beginning words of God's message to you and to all the human race. Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. In the beginning... In the beginning, our planet Earth was wrapped in darkness. It had no form, and it was void. And that beginning is a foretelling of what your future is at this moment. Can you you see your future? Can you create the events of your future? No, no, you cannot. We can make hopeful plans for our future. We can dream about good things in our future, but like it or not, our futures are wrapped in the darkness of unknown mystery. At this moment, our futures are without form and they are void. Now that is the truth, but it is the truth only from the human perspective. You and I cannot see or create the moments of our future, the events of our future, but our Lord Jesus can and he will. Plainly said, your future will be created by Jesus Christ. In fact, it can be said that your future is Jesus Christ. As we think about this final day of 2023, we we think about our lives and about our future, I want the scriptures, the holy scriptures, to remind you about who Jesus really is. Now certainly we know that he is our savior, but we may not always remember that Jesus Christ is actually our creator. Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ, is the God of our creation. Now listen to these very first words from the Gospel of John as he tells us who Jesus actually is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. All things that came into being through Jesus, and all things that will come into being through Jesus, include you and include your future. Your future is created by Jesus Christ. Now, in regard to that truth, listen to these words that reveal a profound truth about your Lord Jesus. Now, these words are found in the book of Hebrews in verses 1 through 3 of chapter 1. The writer wrote this for your attention. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by the Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the words. He, that is Jesus, he is the reflection of God's glory 
and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. The exact imprint of God's being. Those words plainly tell us that Jesus Christ is God. And what about the words, he sustains all things by his powerful word? Another translation of sustains is bears along or carries along. In other words, everything that exists, everything that exists is sustained in existence by the power of your Lord Jesus Christ. That everything includes this planet Earth, your present lives, and your futures. Without Jesus, without his power that sustains creation, the universe would simply become empty, cold darkness, and would no longer, no longer exist. The universe, without the sustaining power of Jesus Christ, the universe would cease to exist. But because of Jesus, you have life and you have a future, a future sustained by your Lord Jesus Christ. Now, every moment, every moment of your future will be created and sustained in existence by our Lord Jesus. As you think about the future, you think about Jesus Christ literally creating your future, listen to these words spoken to you by Jesus, seated on his throne. These words are found in the book of Revelation, 21st chapter, verses 5 and 6. And the one, Jesus Christ, the one who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. He said, Write his, his words, so they are trustworthy and true. Then he said, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So, Jesus, who is God, has told us that he is making all things new. And part of that all things is this very moment, this present moment and the future. Jesus sustains the present and creates a new future every moment of every day. That is who Jesus Christ truly is. And when he spoke about making all things new, Jesus wasn't speaking just about us. He wasn't speaking about just the human race. He wasn't speaking just about our future lives. He was actually speaking about the future of the entire universe. When Jesus said he was making all things new, he literally meant all things. Capital A, capital L, capital L, all things. So it is that everything that now exists throughout the universe is going to be made new. In testimony to that truth, listen to these words written long ago by the apostle Peter. You'll find these words in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. Peter wrote, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise. The elements will be dissolved. With, the elements will be dissolved with fire, and everything that is done on it. Everything that is done on it will be burned up. Since all these things are to be dis dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze, the elements melt with fire. But in accordance with his promises, we wait for new heavens, a new earth, where righteousness is at home. So, by the power of your Lord Jesus Christ, the heavens and the earth are going to be destroyed and then recreated. There will be a new everything created by our Lord Jesus. Now, a person can easily ask a question about all this stuff, this destruction, and the question could be, why? Why do you want to destroy all that exists? Specifically for today, why would Jesus Christ want to destroy planet Earth? Well, I think the answer to that question, at least one answer to that question, is found in the book of Genesis. 
And that answer has to do with the sons of Adam and Eve, those two young men named Cain and Abel. You remember that Cain and Abel, Abel both uh, brought offerings to God. God accepted Abel's offering, but he rejected Cain's offering. As a result, Cain was jealous, Cain was angry. Now, what you are about to hear was the result of Cain's anger. In the fourth chapter of Genesis, you'll find these words in verses 8 through 11. Cain said to his brother Abel, let us go out to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother? He, Cain, said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Again, the Lord said to Cain, you are cursed from the ground. Well, today we say that we are blessed from the ground because it is from the ground that are the, the foods that give us our food. It is from the ground that our food comes. We say to the Lord, Surely not all the ground is a source of curse. We say to God, surely the ground does not curse us because of a sin committed by one person thousands of years ago. We say to God, that curse stuff doesn't make sense and it is not fair. Well, God who created the ground could reply to our arguments by saying, What about the blood of millions of innocent people that has been shed by sin and cruel violence since the day that Cain murdered Abel? God could say to us, because of sin, the ground is soaked with the blood of innocent people everywhere around the world. God could reply to us with words like that, but I think his ultimate answer can be found in the fifth chapter of Isaiah in verses eight and nine. There, God says to us and to all people of all time, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So, like it or not, the earth will be destroyed by fire. And in that fire, all the sin all the sin soaked into the ground by innocent blood will be destroyed. The evidence of sin will be completely and forever destroyed and forever gone. Soil, soil stained by innocent blood will be forever wiped out of existence and forever gone. But our Lord God, our Lord Jesus is the Lord of life and is the creator of that which will replace the present sin-stained earth, and the present heaven. Just as he constantly creates a new future for each of you, so will he create a new future for planet Earth and for the entire universe. As Peter said, the heavens and earth will be destroyed. But after that, after that destruction, something entirely new will be created created by your Lord Jesus. Now listen to these words. These words foretell your, the, the new future, your new future. These re- words written for your hearing are found in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 through 5. The Apostle John writes this for you. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. 
mourning and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. I am making all things new. Those are the words of God. Those are the words of your Lord Jesus Christ. Those words are a promise. They are a sacred promise made to you. A promise of new creation. A promise of goodness for you. A promise. A promise that will one day lead you into a new eternal life. And for that promise... That sacred promise we say to our Lord Jesus, we profoundly, truly say, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your care, for your love. Thank you for your creation. Thank you for being our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray this in Jesus Christ's name. We say to you, Lord God, thank you for your creation. Thank you for allowing us to have the gift of existence, the gift of being able to share in creation with you. Thank you for giving to us the gift of life. Thank you for our past and thank you for our future. We have no idea, Lord God, what our future is, but we know that it is Jesus Christ who is creating it even as we speak. And we thank you for that. We thank you for our future. We thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ. And in his name we pray. Amen. Well, let's join together now in singing hymn number... No, wait a minute. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his face and be gracious to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing our closing hymn, number 506.